What is happening? Welcome to another pitch video breakdown. My name is Nick Pollock, founder of PitcherList.com, former college pitcher and pitching coach. And yes, we are going to talk about another guy who's amazing. His name is Kevin Gaussman. Oh, he's back to normal. He's doing all the fun things. And we're going to watch it because he dominated the Red Sox. 10 strikeouts, zero walks um, in this game against the Red Sox. And yeah, we're going to watch the fourth inning uh, where he did some really good things. So let's get straight to it. If you don't know... Kevin Gaussman, well, he throws about 94, 95. Sometimes he goes up to like 97 on that four-seamer. Throws a ton of strikes. Probably like 80% strike rate on his four-seamer, which is one of the highest in the majors. And then he has a splitter, which is just devastating. Like, absolutely devastating. He also has a little slider that he flips into the zone. Um, and he gets some called strikes. That's a high CSW, but it's not really like the most effective pitch. It's just more about using it early in counts and all that kind of stuff. All right. So, let's get to it. Here he is against J.D. Martinez. This is a very, very good lineup. And what he likes to do is he likes to go uh, a lot of arm side stuff with that four seamer. This is a little bit of a mistake. Uh, you generally don't want to see um, Gaussman throwing low. You want to see him around here. This is that's generally how he hovers uh, with four seamers and gets his strikes. Uh, sometimes he does come down a little too far, and that does allow him to get um, messed up a little bit. But at the same time, because you're going to see these splitters that are just like ridiculous and doing this all the time, some guys. Just kind of take it, thinking that it might be the splitter, and then all of a sudden it stays up with a fastball to get a strike. So, could have also been just a passive J.D. Martinez there. We'll see. Um, completely overthrew that one. He's very upset about it, and I would be too. Uh, he tries to throw the split, and it just kind of sails up and away. Not, not great, Bob. Maybe you might see a slider here. No, there's a fastball down the middle. Wow. Wow. This is how the game of baseball has changed. <laughs> if, if you want one representation for how modern baseball is different, just look at this pitch. This is a 2-1 offering against one of the best hitters out there, the most disciplined hitters in the game in J.D. Martinez. And this is such a clear fastball count, but these days you can get away with this. That's a fastball right down the middle. And because the game has changed so much so that breaking balls are often thrown into one counts, all these secondary pitches, a meaty 94-mile-per-hour fastball right down the middle at 2-1 is fouled off by a guy like J.D. Martinez. Oh, man. That's, that's wild. That's absolutely wild to me. All right. Now you have him at 2-2. You could probably throw the splitter if you throw a good one down. Oh, he throws a fastball up. I mean, so here's the thing. That entire at-bat, Gaussman didn't throw a good splitter. He missed the 182 up here. I guess that's what's in JD's head the entire time. I and mean, this is the fourth inning. Um, likely the approach early in the, in the game had included more of those splitters. That's what, I guess, a 2-1. That's how he was able to get away with that. And then uh, now at 96 up, and I was even saying, cool, this is totally a splitter count. He sees that fastball up and in, and JD just can't get to it. And there is something to be said about that 2-1 pitch. If he's fouling that off at 94, you throw a better one at higher velocity, it does indicate that JD isn't quite timed on it, right? And that maybe you can mess him up a little bit more, and that's what they did. Pretty cool. And there is some free real estate. Oh, I kind of dig the, uh, I don't know, there's something about, like, what is your favorite umpire strike call? It might be up there for me with this one. I love that. Just a little... Just a little, you know, not like this big thing. Just like, yeah, right. That's a strike. You know, he's still down there and the crowd's ready for the next one. I kind of dig that. I, uh, but I, uh, sorry. So you got your free real estate with the slider. Um, and you can kind of come back with a splitter now. Yeah, there it is. 86 and that's in the zone. And normally, normally Gaussman splitters are not really a zone rate pitch. They're about, they're supposed to be down here. This one is going to come back like that. And it's really impossible. Like, you can see this right now. This is on the trajectory to go about here. Right? And it's going to come back this way. As we go. Just, oh, that's so perfect. And I don't think that's the intent of Gaussman. I think he's trying to play the game of, like, fastballs coming here. So then he's trying to make this and then come back that way. And then he swings over it. But pff, if you can do that all day. And there's a <laughs> – and I'm, like, freaking out about how good this pitch is. And just look at the subtle <laughs> – I love it. 
All right, now you can go in up and in. Yeah, you go up and in here to Bogarts. Yeah, beautiful. And that's a good job by Bogarts by getting something on this. A lot of times, this is an out to third, right? Um, and this also showcases, you know, I do this a lot where, like, if this is down here, barrel the back gets on it. If you get it here, this is like a foul ball or something to third. If you get it here, that's a whiff, right? That's how you should be thinking about the inside corner where you're locating your fastballs. So essentially, these are fine. This is not in an 0-2 count, right? That's that's the mentality you have to have with your fastballs. And like those little differences, oh, they can do a lot. So there's a foul ball inside. He's going to try and go back door, maybe with a fastball here or a slider, something. Whatever you throw, if you pinpoint the outside edge here with anything that stays relatively close to the zone, or if it's a slider you want down here, but that's not really Gaussman's play. Um, this could be a backdoor splitter. It could be a fastball. Let's see. I'm curious. They are trying to do the slider. What? That is the most subtle. Oh, my God. I want to see this punch out. Oh, man. That's so funny. This is not a strike, first of all. Good job, Bogarts. Not a strike. This is not Gaussman's go-to thing either. Good frame, but I feel bad for Bogarts there. Good take. Um, wow, look at that. So, to see Verdugo push out his hips there, I mean, it does have some movement back here. Like, even though it is a four-seamer, it is coming like this and then comes back that way. You know? Right? A little bit of touch. I mean, that's just because he gets in the side of, ball, of the ball a little bit. Like, you can see on release um, from, from Gaussman here. Like, he's a little bit on the side of this and pulling across. And that will generally give it that, the, that natural twist. But it's not like not like a two-seamer one, you know? All right. But that's just kind of natural natural horizontal bend that you see. Uh, but now that you've done that, you can do the splitter away now, right? Yeah, he's trying to do that. Wow, look how much sink that is. Look at this. This is, oh my god. It's up here, guys. It is here right now. And look where this ends. Like, are you kidding? That is the drop on this thing. Oh my lord. And the thing is, the problem is, once again, you see Verdugo. What does Verdugo do? He pushes out, right? And what that tells me is that, oh man, if this started here and did that, he's swinging. You know, that, it, it, ends, it ends over here, down here, right? But, like, you're thinking, like, oh, that's middle of the plate. Like, no, this has to be over here because he gave up on it not based on height. He gave up on it on east-west. So, he gave him another way to say no. And that messed that up. Looks like they're going high heater here. And he executed the pitch. It was just the wrong pitch. You know, some, I mean, when I see this from a pitcher and they allow a hit, I just go, oh, okay. Like, this is so much better to allow a hit on than missing your spot. And then, like, they take advantage of that. Verdugo was just ready for a fastball up. He essentially saw a splitter that missed and thought, okay, this is going to be a fastball count. Got one that is more over the plate than everything that he thinks is too inside. And good on him for getting on top of it. You know, hitting the center. That's just the wrong pitch call. Uh, so now you have a man on first. Slider? Yeah, slider for, for some re free real estate. Okay, fastball inside, it looks like. Oh, they're trying to do the splitter. Man. And he hasn't been consistent with the splitter here. Slider away. It's pretty interesting because normally Gaussman like pounds, pounds, pounds fastballs. But I think they're expecting story beyond that is why we haven't seen it. But 2-1. There you go. Great pitch. I mean, this is what we're talking about before. In 2-1, you don't need to get a whiff. Right? I would rather throw this. In a 2-1, I'd rather throw this than this. Why? Because this could be the grounder to third while this would be the whiff. You know? And at 2-1... I'd rather get the grounder to third than the whiff. Because the whiff just gets me to 2-2. Two, two. The grounder gets me an out. So now you can go higher up. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. And he's on that. And the, there's an instinct to either say go back up again. But like now, now it's a tough decision. Because it's like you can throw the splitter. You can take the chance on that right now. But if he doesn't swing, you got to go after it a second time. Why? Because... The mentality of story is going to be, if I spit on the splitter, 3-2 is going to throw me that fastball again. Right? So then you got to do it twice. Then you're really selling that 3-2 fastball. And my mentality is at 2-2, two, two, 
I at two two you throw the same thing at three two. Whenever you throw a two two, you throw a three two. That's just generally how I feel about it. But let's see what they're going to go with. And there it is, the splitter, and you get him. Beautiful. You executed it. Ah, oh, bend the knee. You know, good job. I mean, look at let's look at the movement on this guy. Oh my god, this is so nice. This is up here. Ugh. And where are we talking? Woo-wee! Falling out of the zone all the way down to here. Man. Such a filthy pitch. And that's Kevin Gaussman. Good job, buddy. You earned it. It, it. it wasn't even the most flashy inning. I know he got three strikeouts. But that was really the best splitter you threw the entire time. Normally we see those all day. He bounced a couple. Uh, fastball was good, but not the most excellent. He had some nice sliders in that they got for strikes. I mean, the one to Bogarts for strike three was kind of whack. <laughs> But still not a bad pitch. It just shouldn't have been one. It was a good job by Bogarts, and he got punished for it. But, uh, but yeah, Gaussman's back, y'all. I mean, that's three strikeouts in this inning alone. Um, didn't even really make a mistake against Verdugo. It was just the wrong pitch call, and that was just it, you know? Uh, so be stoked about Gaussman. The, the Blue Jays should be so happy to have their ace back. And, uh, yeah, I just can't wait to watch more Gaussman. All right, that is going to do for today. Remember... Subscribe, like this video, hit the bell, all that stuff. Help me out. Leave some comments. Tell me what you like, what you don't like about this. I, I'm going to keep doing these every morning whenever I can. So make sure you don't miss a single one of those. We have the Nick and Alex baseball show tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern time every single Tuesday. It is so much fun. Check it out live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash pitchlist. Well, that's going to do it for today. So my name is Nick Pollock, and may your babas be low and your strikeout tie.